changed my life. And I was not prepared for how quick my life was going to change. It was, uh, I remember doing the first three months of the book tour, I did about 60 cities in the first 90 days. I was on a plane by myself, I had to do a different city, a different spot, speak to a different group. And it was, the toughest part about the whole thing. I mean, I wasn't living that lifestyle that I was talking to people about. I wasn't working out. I was just making excuses and just putting off to the next day. I wasn't eating right, just eating junk food in the airport. Gained like over 20 pounds in the first couple of months. Looked in the mirror. I remember that feeling of seeing that athlete, you know, that I was supposed to be speaking about. When he looked back at me, I barely recognized who he was. For me, you know, that's like, there's not a lot of weight, like, going to streaming places, it was like belly and cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> and it was something that I knew I had to go and change. In the morning, I was supposed to go in, in this morning in particular, 90 days into this tour, I was supposed to go and deliver a speech, the speech was to these mortgage makers. And I thought, yeah, I, you know, they're going to look at me and know that every word that's coming out of my mouth, so I'm not living that message that I'm talking about. For the first time in my life, I felt like I was a fraud. Even me, you know, being that motivational speaker, you know, and seeing them on stage trying to get other people excited about life like I couldn't on my own. You know, I realized that at that point, it doesn't matter who you are, the world everyone goes through tough times and challenges. Sometimes we go and try to put a mask on it to go and try to like make it look like something, something different. But for me, the hardest part is when other people would go and look at me and they would see somebody who was disabled and not see me the way that I see myself, the way that my parents raised me, which is not the disability. Something that growing up, you know, it didn't, it wasn't even something that mattered. My friends and family, my comfort zone at home, and people that knew me there, like back in Gwinnett County, where I grew up, then it was totally normal. When I go out and travel, and other people would go and see me for the first time, it would make perfect sense. The guy in a wheelchair, without arms and legs, couldn't get out of his wheelchair. With me, I found help. I used to, and I had to go all the way back to my childhood growing up, and like remember all those lessons that my parents taught me about just accepting myself. I used to get that a lot, like especially in kindergarten, going to elementary school, kids would ask tons of questions. They would come up and be fearless. They'd say, what happened to your arms and legs? They'd go and tell them, well, this is the way that I was born. They'd say, what happened to your arms and legs? They'd go and say, well, this is the way that God made me. they like, keep asking, what happened to your arms and legs? Like, they want to get to the dirt. Real story. Finally, I go and like sometimes my parents had like a limit. If kids asked like nine or ten times, and I was allowed to tell them whatever I wanted. <laughs> so I go and kids would be like, "Wow, your arms and legs." I go and tell them, "Well, I was really bad one day. <laughs> my dad was in the navy, and they had sharks outside the boat. And he hang up and help me over the boat. <laughs> and you see the kids like go and freak out, I'm like, whoa! <laughs> like it makes perfect sense now." But to me, it was that, you know, my life was normal growing up. We didn't have that many, like, adaptations for different things. We would go and eat with normal silverware, like I saw in the video, like, just spin this one around. I would, you know, play with my three younger sisters who, uh, you know, they were all born totally normal. And just, like, play with them, run around the house, down on all fours. I wouldn't really use my wheelchair too much at home. Learned how to type when I was probably about sixth, seventh grade in that age range. Like most of us, I wanted to play video games. <laughs> I type about 50 words a minute on a normal keyboard. And, you know, we just figured out how to do things. We're going right with a normal pen and pencil, so just put it between my arms. When I was two years old, I scribbled outside the lines just like any other baby and then gradually got better and better. And, and things were, were normal when I was an adult. I went and found a way to go and 
you know, live on my own, so live on my own. My townhouse is three stories, and my bedroom's on the top floor. Have a, a normal vehicle that I drove here today, so it's just a Dodge Durango. <laughs> it's got uh, lifted up pedals. It's the only adaptation on it. Just put the seat up a little bit closer to the wheel. And I freak people out really bad when they come to the drive through <laughs> Pretty big surprise. <laughs> But it was to me, it was just totally normal. So, you know, growing up, when people would see me that way, then that was like my comfort zone. But every time I'd have to go into a new place, that's when it was really tough. 